Hello and welcome to Tribe Called Cars. My name is Ben Griffin and today we're looking at how to set up a steering wheel in Forza Horizon 4. Now the reason I say it is because that happens. It really is not great. Oh, it's horrible. It's, it's just so unintuitive. There's no feedback. So you don't know when you're gonna lose control very easily. And by the time you do it, it reacts so slowly that you've lost the slide anyway, and you're out of control, which means it's kind of easy to drive around town slowly. That isn't a problem. It's kind of easy to drift, but racing fast, sort of doing Goliath in a hypercar or a supercar. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> that is not gonna work very well. So basically in this video, I'm gonna try out some settings and see if I can actually get around Goliath with the steering wheel without wanting to hurt myself or anyone else. I have absolutely no idea how well that's gonna go. If you'd like to subscribe and like the video, that would be awesome, helps me massively. Now it's worth noting that I am using not the cheapest wheel. This is the TSXW Racer with the Sparco P310 competition mod wheel. So this, I think, these days is probably five, 600 quid. At least that's what it was when it's new. I imagine it's kind of similar now. But obviously I'm hoping because Logitech wheels aren't all crazy different, or at least they're built on similar technologies and whatever. Hopefully some of this stuff will be transferable. So you'll be able to do better things with your own wheel. So first things first, navigate yourself to settings. And let's have a look at what we've got going on. Then you go into your control settings, hit your right back, left back, or in this, in this case, it's the paddle shifters. And then down on the bottom left, you'll see advanced. Press the button for that. And here we are, all the interesting stuff. This is nothing to do with steering wheels, but it's worth turning this on because you can then see live telemetry when you're tuning your car. And that's kind of cool, worth doing that. Anyway. So we've got steering axis dead zone, steering axis dead zone outside, linearity, inside axis for another acceleration, deceleration dead zone, clutch, e-brake, vibration scale, force feedback scale, enter spring scale, wheel damper, force feedback understeer, minimum force, and wheel rotation angle. Now all of these have descriptions on the right. So instead of me telling you all of them, you can read through and that will help you get a slightly better idea, but ultimately, this particular one here is important because this is how much you twist the wheel relates to how much steering takes place in the game. So a complete rotation of the wheel will be 600 degrees, basically. Now this really does vary in real cars and real life. Some supercars, hypercars, rally cars can have way less than 900 degrees. Some cars might even be as low as 270, 300. It's not uncommon at all. And the thing with 900 is that it sort of closely resembles a complete rotation, which is good in terms of realism in some ways, but also means you have to do the most steering to get full lock. And that is obviously not the best at high speed and can be really annoying if you're just trying to drive around town. So. <laughs> no, that's all right, all right. Now on the flip side, 300 is good because you have to do the least amount of steering to get full luck. However, that means you can overcompensate if something goes wrong. As you can see, it's already more responsive. And in a game that is quite arcadey, I think this is probably the best solution. Well, already it feels a bit more substantial, a little bit more grip. It's a little more intuitive than before, but we haven't lost control yet. That is the big question. Oh, it's quicker to correct. Really not bad at all. Over steering like a bitch there. Now bearing in mind this is a very high horsepower car. So perhaps not the fairest test. Anyway, using the Ferrari 59 XX Evo because it's just a much better car. And ideally I would like to try and do Goliath in a really fast time and this car is probably the fastest car in the game for racing. The other thing is it handles like an absolute beast. Very grippy, 
I have a good feeling actually, weirdly enough, this could do okay. The longest, fastest, and I guess most difficult race in the game, Goliath, in the Ferrari 599 XX Evo, and the steering wheel. What could go wrong? Now, before we get to the lap itself, let's have a little quick look at some of the settings I change and explain why I change them, because that's kind of useful, isn't it? What I've done is, we'll start from the bottom, 300 degrees for wheel rotation, so I can save a slide fast. Also, 300 is a third of 900, so there's kind of a logical thing. I think if you do 270, if you're used to 540 in rally games, for instance, then that might kind of fit with your brain better. Or it might make zero difference at all, who knows? But anyway, I'm going with 300. I've lowered the force feedback minimum to 50, so I should have a slightly lighter feeling than I had before, which is what I want. I don't want to be battling with the steering wheel, I just want to know when I'm losing grip and be able to react quick enough to save it. Similar reason for adjusting that. This is a bit low because I want a slightly lighter feeling for the steering. Center spring, I don't want it bouncing back to the middle too much either, so again, I've lowered that a little bit. Could possibly go a bit lower than we have here. Force feedback, I've dropped this. I don't want too much interference, but just a bit is enough to let you know what's going on. Vibration, again, lower. It doesn't need to be that high, to be honest. You can still feel what's going on with this wheel. The rest, I've kept the same. I also made another little change. So go into difficulty settings. I swapped steering from normal to simulation. I think normal with a controller is better. It helps smooth out the fact that you can steer from zero to full in one press and that's good because that can really throw a car off uh, balance but for a steering wheel where you've got degrees of rotation and it's slower to twist i would say simulation's better you can be a little bit more accurate with your input so we're going to put that on don't do assisted that's just no i mean if you want to have traction control stuff on fine i actually have abs on sometimes I personally, I personally prefer it. With pedals, I, you can practice and get quite good with ABS off, but I personally can't be bothered these days. Um, now I've made a video about this car and how to make it faster, so you're welcome to go check it out. I made a couple of minor tweaks recently, but ultimately very similar. You can see all the stuff I've just been through there. So what I've done is adjust the braking force pressure and I've put it towards high because this means you're getting more braking power for less travel on the pedal. So it means you have to be a bit more sensitive, but it also means the brakes will go from zero to 100% with less movement, which is faster. So again, that is good. Some people like 200%, I think 50 is a good happy medium, particularly if you have ABS off because your wheels are more likely to lock up. And that means major understeer, unless you can quickly save it. But that's not good. You don't want to be skidding. You want to be braking at maximum grip, but the wheel's still rotating. Now let's get on with the race. 